Pressure appears to be mounting on Pakistan to take action against those behind the deadly attacks in Mumbai last week. Yesterday, India formally demanded that Islamabad act, saying the elements from Pakistan were behind those attacks. U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice also urged Pakistan to cooperate and to follow evidence wherever it leads. Rice is due to head to India on Wednesday. Joining us now live from Washington, D.C. is Malou Innocent. She's a foreign policy expert at the Cato Institute. Malou, how, do, well, first of all, do you think uh, Pakistan is going to cooperate uh, with India here? I think Pakistan will initially try and cooperate as much with New Delhi and Washington as possible. However, the problem behind many of these militant organizations that operate within Pakistan is that it's difficult to determine whether or not they're operating independent of the government of Islamabad, if these are rogue elements that are acting at the behest of Islamabad. And so this is what Washington and New Delhi must try and sift through and understanding the sort of uh, duplicitous relations that Pakistan and Washington have had, especially over the past year or so especially with relations between uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, giving recent revelations that uh, Islamabad is still supporting elements of the original Afghan Taliban. So uh, going forward, it appears that Islamabad will be uh, uh, willing to assist in the investigation. However, there is also uh, a concern that uh, possibly uh, Pakistan might have uh, double dealings on the side with these militant organizations. So it's yet to be seen or yet to, yet to be seen what will happen. Well, India and Pakistan both have had a very long and uh, tense relationship, uh, been trying to move forward at several points in their relationship there. Do you think that the current relationship can recover? I mean, they were trying to make inroads. Do you think it could recover from these latest attacks? It doesn't look promising, honestly. Uh, there was relative calm in the bilateral relationship over the past couple of years. Um, I, I think that the most recent precedents, however, for uh, sort of uh, the initiation of conflict occurred in December 2001 um, after elements of Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence Agency were uh, allegedly were behind another attack uh, on the uh, Indian Parliament in New Delhi. And there were uh, both countries amassed troops along the international border for over a year. Uh, after that, uh, tensions subsided and the Bush administration instituted a vigorous regional diplomacy. And so, again, uh, tensions uh, went to the wayside. Now, again, given the increased in tensions, uh, in tensions now, uh, there is a potential for, for uh, conflict. It remains to be seen what will happen given the fact that for many Indian uh, policymakers, they understand that war is not the best option. Uh, given that war would uh, derail its rapid economic rise, it could of course, um, undermine uh, foreign investment by, of course, uh, making uh, foreign investors a little more skeptical of India's short-term um, stability. So, again, uh, a war uh, could be in the offing, but I'm sure that Indian officials understand that war is not the best option for them right now. Why is U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice heading to India? Again, this is just a, an attempt on their part, similar to, to several years ago, to almost seven or eight years ago, uh, again, trying to attempt to to uh, uh, mitigate the potential for a spiraling conflict. Uh, India and Pakistan have been in three full-scale wars during the Cold War, and uh, ever since they've had minor border sh skirmishes along uh, each of their controlled parts of Kashmir. And so uh, both, uh, both uh, Condoleezza Rice and President Bush want to, again, try and uh, assuage uh, uh, Pakistan's concerns about India's growing hegemony in the region. India, of course, uh, wants to uh, strengthen its own uh, security and econo economic prosperity within the region. And so uh, for Condoleezza Rice as well and for President Bush, they want to again try and decrease the p possibility of conflict, uh, not only for India's uh, ongoing growth, but also if there happens to be a conflict between India and Pakistan, this will uh, offer an excuse to Pakistani officials to move uh, their our security forces away from their western border along the border with Afghanistan and to its eastern border with India. This would, of course, relieve pressure on Al-Qaeda Al and the Taliban militants that are destabilizing Afghanistan. So if there is a war, if there is any sort of conflict, this will have a direct impact on uh, U.S. Uh, involvement within Afghanistan. Yeah, and that was my follow-up here, Malou. I mean, to what extent, then, is it very important for India and Pakistan not to escalate tensions too much uh, so that the U.S. will continue to have pressure on these uh, terrorist forces or in you know the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan.
Right, Maura, I think that's a great, it's an excellent question. I think that um, the United States is doing whatever it can, again, to sort of stem the spiraling violence that's occurring in Afghanistan, and that requires uh, Pakistan's undivided uh, loyalty and assistance in the struggle. But again, given the, the history of the two countries, given the ethnic and religious tensions that have been boiling uh, between uh, Pakistan and India for six decades, if not several centuries, um, it is in America's uh, critical interests, again, to try and mitigate the potential for any spiraling armed conflict in the near future. Malou, thanks so much for joining us. Malou Innocent, foreign policy expert at the Cato Institute.